I am going to tick off a lot of Charismatics and Pentecostals, and this is not my intent. But slain in the Spirit, nowhere in the Bible. I know where they explain it from. It's from the Gospel of John. It's during Jesus' time in the garden when Judas leads a bunch of men there, and we see this passage, so pause to read the full thing. There's a problem with this explanation, and it occurs in two spots. We have to get into word study with one word, but one spot is very evident. We see in this exact same passage that the men went backwards and fell to the ground. People who are slain in the spirit do not go backwards. They fall backwards. But see, a lot of Charismatics, a lot of Pentecostals, and a lot of Christians, as well as pastors, have used that passage to mean that they fell backwards. First and foremost, the men went backwards. So, what does the word fell mean? If we take a look at the Greek of the word fell, we see the original Greek called pipto, which in the context of the passage means to prostrate oneself, to fall forward. So to put it all together in the Gospel of John, the men went backwards and then they prostrated themselves at Jesus' feet. Those who are slain in the Spirit fall backwards. And this is another thing too. People who are slain in the Spirit have a momentary lapse of consciousness. This consciousness can last anywhere from several seconds to several minutes. Nowhere in the book of Acts, and we have to look at Acts as to how the Holy Spirit worked with Christians. Nowhere in the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 2, Acts chapters 8, 9, and 10, and in Acts chapter 19, did the Holy Spirit ever knock anyone backwards or make them unconscious. I'll tell you what this does, though. When people are slain in the spirit and they go unconscious, that gives demons a chance to be able to enter into them. When you are unconscious, you have a cleared mind. In meditation techniques, as well as higher consciousness, they want you to clear your mind, to draw a blank. And what does that do? It allows the demons to come in. After being slain in the spirit, people are usually laughing. They're speaking in a form of tongues. Now, I believe in the signs of tongues, but those tongues do nothing to elevate Jesus, God, or the kingdom. In short, slain in the spirit, nowhere in the Bible.